Hi, I'm Rick Martinez, a food editor and recipe developer at Food Network. I'm a Texan, but my grandparents are actually from northern Mexico. And today, I'm going to make for you a couple of dishes that are both Tex-Mex and northern Mexican in origin, rice and beans. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make beans. And this is a very specific type of beans. It's called frijoles borrachos. That means drunk beans. They're drunk because we're gonna put a beer in them. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna soak our beans. I have some dried pinto beans here. This is definitely an occasion where you want to make these from dried, you don't wanna use a can. I am not a huge fan of soaking beans. I feel like when you soak beans, um, they absorb the water, which is what you want them to do to reduce the uh, cooking time. When they absorb the water, guess what? They taste like water. But this is one recipe that I am saying to soak your beans because I did try it with, um, without the soaking time. Uh, the issue is, is that when you add the alcohol and you add the tomatoes, which are acidic, it slows down the cooking times. So that's why I actually soak them. So I've got some boiling water. I'm going to add this to my bowl. And to this, I'm going to stir in two tablespoons of kosher salt. So I'm giving this a little stir to dissolve the salt, and I don't see any crystals in there, so it's all dissolved. Now I'm going to add the beans. Now I am going to cook the bacon. So I'm going to cut this bacon into half-inch pieces. I don't want to cut them too fine because they're going to shrink up once they get cooked and rendered. All right. So we're going to go medium heat, about six to eight minutes. All we're really wanting to do is render some of the fat and crisp it up. So I'm using thick cut smoked bacon. I like thick cut bacon because it holds its shape. I also like the smokiness that the, uh, the bacon adds, but feel free to use whatever your favorite type of bacon is. So I'm gonna chop an onion. And I always start by taking the root end and the stem end off, cutting it in half, and then peeling the skin off. And then to cut it, I'm gonna start at the stem end. And I want probably a medium dice on this. So I'm just gonna cut straight through, palm down, and then make the cross cuts. Sharp knife works best. Make the claw. And then you can just give this little end a little chop. And that's done. All right. Now, I'm going to work on the jalapenos. So you can make this dish with green bell peppers or red bell peppers or poblano peppers. I actually prefer the flavor of the jalapenos. So I'm gonna take all the stems off. And, and then you wanna just cut them in half. Take a regular teaspoon, and you can just kind of trace the outside edge of the pepper with the spoon. And you hear it breaking up the fibers. And then you can just lift the seeds right out. If there's any remaining seeds in there, you can just give it a little scrape, and you have a completely clean and seeded pepper. If you like it spicy, you can definitely keep the, the seeds in there. But with four jalapenos, it, it is going to be really spicy. And if a few seeds stay in, it's not gonna hurt anybody. So the way that I like to chop these, kind of flatten them out a little bit, and then with the skin side up, just make little thin strips 
I like to do it about a quarter inch, but you know, you can make them bigger or smaller depending on how you like it. And I'll do two halves and then show you how to make the cross cut. Okay, then just gather them up, line everybody up, and then kind of hold them together and make your little claw fist so you're not cutting your hand end so that the, the, uh, the blade is resting against your knuckle and there's no chance of you cutting your finger. And then just make the cross cut. All right, now we will do the garlic. So I'm gonna chop four cloves of garlic. You can also microplane these. Also, it's a slow cooking dish, so I'm not gonna be bothered by larger pieces of garlic in the beans. So give them a light crush and then take the skin off. You can also give it a little whack with the back of your knife if you wanna do that. I'm gonna take this little slightly woody nubby off. Not entirely necessary, but sometimes it can be a little bit hard to digest. All right, and then the way that I do it is just slice the garlic, kind of turn so you have a flat edge so that you're not potentially going to cut your finger. And all right, and then I'll just go crosswise and then just go over them until you get to the size that you want. All right, this bacon looks really good. I'm going to take it out, slotted spoon. I wanna leave all the bacon drippings in the pan. I'm gonna cook the vegetables in that. So now I'm just gonna transfer all the veg into the bacon fat. That is exactly the sound that you wanna hear. I wanna get some color on the onions. I wanna soften up the jalapenos. All of that bacon fat's going to infuse with the vegetables and just give you amazing flavor. So we're salting not only the beans, but we are also pulling out some of the caramel flavors. So this is four teaspoons of kosher salt. And then just move them around. As the liquid comes out of the veg, you'll be able to scrape up some of this browned bacon bits off the side of the pan. You definitely wanna pull those up. That's all just delicious bacon flavor. All right, these look like they've gotten some nice color. They're just starting to get tender. They're getting lightly golden. I'm gonna make a little well in the center and I'm going to add my tomatoes. I'm using one can of fire roasted tomatoes and now we're just gonna cook these down until the liquid evaporates. It's not gonna take that long, a couple of minutes. I love this, it's the colors of Mexico in this pot. That looks good. Almost all the liquid is evaporated. All right, so I'm going to add my beans. I'm going to add 10 cups of water. Put in the bacon. And if there's any just a little leftover bacon fat in there, you can just go ahead and scrape that in too. It's more flavor. And then finally, my Mexican lager. So I'm gonna bring this up to a boil, I'll reduce it to a simmer, and we'll let it cook uncovered for about 45 to 75 minutes. And I realize that's a pretty big range, but depending on the beans that you're using, sometimes you'll buy a bag of beans and it might be really old, it might have been sitting on the store shelf for a while. Those beans are probably gonna take a little bit longer, even with the overnight soak. So now I'm gonna start the rice. So the first thing I'm gonna do is prep my veg for the rice. I am using three carrots for this recipe. And I'm using a Y peeler to take the, the outside off. And you can see, they just peel so nicely. If you had larger carrots, you might get away with just using one or two, depending on how big they are. All right, so I'm going to take the ends off the carrots. I'm going to cut these into pieces. You just want them basically into planks. 
They don't have to be exact. This is a fairly rustic dish, but they should all be around the same size. So just make sure that you're, you get that at least. And then just line everything up and just give it a chop. All right, so we're all chopped. Now we're going to do the onion. Take the stem end off, take the root end off, cut it in half. So I'm only gonna use half of the onion for this recipe. I will save the half for another use. And I showed you how I cut in the bean part of this episode. So I'm just gonna cut it the same way I did before. So for this dish, I'm going to grate my garlic. The rice is actually only gonna cook for about 20 minutes. So you can totally chop it, but I feel like for something that's gonna cook that quickly, I would prefer it to be really finely grated. So whenever you're grating garlic, you don't wanna crush them too much, just so that they hold their shape while you grate them. So you want a sharp microplane for this. our garlic. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. I'm not gonna chop this into the dish. I'm actually just gonna have this and then lay it on top. So that's literally all you have to do and we'll save that for the end. So now I'm gonna toast my rice. So I want a really, really hot skillet and long grain rice. This is just Carolina rice. So nothing's really gonna happen for a little bit. The rice is going to heat up, and as it does, it will eventually start to toast, but it's gonna take a few minutes. In total, this step takes about 12 minutes. So you're gonna start to smell a little bit of, of some toasting. It's gonna start to smell like the beginning of toasted bread. So not quite to the point where the, the toast is getting golden, but just where you like, hmm, I'm smelling some, some toasting starch, because that's what's happening in this pan. And I prefer tossing the rice in the pan. It's, it's more efficient. You're basically taking all the rice on the bottom and flipping it up over. If you don't feel skilled enough to do that or you're scared about getting burned, you can just toss it with a spoon. But you don't have to go crazy. You can just kind of flip it like that. You will need a skillet that has a slightly flared edge or it will not work. Once the pan gets really hot, you really just wanna start tossing it almost continually. It's also a really good workout. So you can see I'm getting a little bit of color and then there's a few little kernels that are getting a little bit of a, a golden color. You really need to be tossing this constantly to make sure that you get an even browning on all the rice. It's gonna get really hot and it's gonna hold onto that heat. So you need to be careful, definitely don't touch it. All right, now we're starting to get some color. And if your pan gets a little hot, then you may want to grab a pot holder like I'm doing. And when your arm gets tired, you can switch to the other arm. And... All right, they're getting nicely evenly colored. That looks really good. I'm gonna transfer that to the bowl. Again, just be really careful because that is super hot. So now we are going to cook our veg. So I'm actually using schmaltz. So schmaltz is actually rendered chicken fat. You do need some fat to saute your veg. You don't have to use that. You could use lard if you wanted to do that. You could use bacon fat, or you could even just use olive oil or just vegetable oil. All right. I'm gonna let that heat up before I put my veg in. So we just wanna round up all of our chopped vegetables. And as with all my other vegetables and sauteing, I like to season at this point to draw out the sugars and to draw out the liquid. So I'm gonna add five teaspoons of kosher salt. 
And you might think that's a lot. And it's funny because if I put the liquid in at this point and you taste the liquid, it would taste really, really salty. And you would think, oh my God, I've over seasoned this. But rice takes a lot of salt. All right. I just want a little bit of color on this. I want the veg to get a little bit tender. We don't need any of these vegetables to be completely cooked through. They are gonna get simmered in the broth for about 20 minutes. This step is probably gonna take about six to eight minutes. In cooking, you'll often hear people talk about layering of flavors. And this is really a fundamental layer of flavor that, that people are referring to. Uh, the sauteing of vegetables, it not only softens them and pre-cooks them, but by caramelizing them, you're just adding a layer of flavor. So you're gonna hit that sweet note. So if you just drop these vegetables in raw, you're not gonna get a lot of that sugar. You're just gonna get raw onion and raw carrot flavor. By sauteing them, you're gonna get those caramel notes. By toasting your rice, you're gonna get that toasted nutty notes. By adding the schmaltz, you're gonna get the chicken notes. By adding more chicken stock at the end, you're gonna really develop that chicken flavor. All right, this is looking really good. I want just a shade more color in there before I go to the next step. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear a little space in the veg, just move them over, and then I'm gonna add the tomato paste. So I'm gonna do this for a couple of reasons. The first is tomato paste can take on a little bit of the flavors of the can or the container that it came in. And it also might have a slightly raw tomato flavor. And again, this is just another way of adding another layer, another dimension of flavor. So I just wanna fry the tomato paste until it goes a little brick red. And this is gonna happen really quickly. It's probably gonna take about a minute. We're looking pretty good. So now I'm going to add my chicken stock. And if you have homemade, definitely use it. If you only have box, that's fine. If you don't have any, then just use water. We've developed enough flavor in there that it'll be fine. And then just give it a stir. And if there's any little brown bits on the bottom, you'll pick those up. I'm gonna crank that to high just so that it'll come to a boil quickly. All right, so this has come to a boil. Now I'm going to add my toasted rice. Be careful because this is still hot. You can see as it hits the water, it's actually continuing to heat the water. It's really, really super hot. Oh, right. And then I'm gonna reduce this to low. I'm going to sprinkle over my thawed, formerly frozen peas. And I'm gonna drop in my Sedano halves. And I'm going to cover this. So the rice is gonna cook for about 20 minutes until all the liquid has been absorbed by the rice. And then you're gonna let it sit covered off heat for 10 minutes, just to make sure that everything is nice and tender. All right, the rice has been resting for about 10 minutes off heat. So now, look at that, oh my God. I think my aunt would be proud of me. This looks so good. Oh, it smells really delicious. But all the liquid has been evaporated. The rice has absorbed everything. It's really nice and fluffy and tender. I'm gonna keep it covered while I chop the cilantro. I'm just gonna give this a, a rough chop. I'm just gonna add this directly to my beans. And then I'm just gonna stir them in. And that fresh cilantro is gonna really pick up the beans and, and elevate the flavor. You feel free to do this however you want. I like them not on top of each other, but definitely touching. So this is just like home. And this is exactly the way that I served it then. Some people like to put the beans on top of the rice. I don't know. I mean, it's fine, but this is the way I do it. I think it's just prettier that way. That, that is a taste of home for me. I'm gonna taste them separately just to make sure that I did both of them justice. Mm. it's so good. The rice is fluffy, but it's cooked through. The sweetness that you get from the, the carrots and the peas, 
a little bit of tang from the tomato, and then this really, really gentle, slow build heat at the end from the serrano. That was really good rice. Now, my frijoles borrachos. Mmm. Mmm. Really, really good. The bacon is really nice. The smokiness from the bacon and the tomato really play well with the cilantro. It's definitely just such a nice combo and it definitely screams cowboy beans to me. This is a really delicious dish. Make the beans, make the rice, toast your rice. This is really good, it's really satisfying. There you go, I've shown you how to make beans and rice and the next time you cook a Mexican meal, these two dishes should be on that plate. I hope you enjoy.